Okay, hello again. <laughs> and and uh, thank you again for giving me the, the floor. Um, first of all, I want to thank the, the authors and the, the, the document you have presented, the manifesto. And uh, I, I think it, in it as a real uh, crucial piece for us to work together and, and to proper promote the dialogue. Um, in name of honesty, I have to tell you that from the two currents of thought, let us say, as Professor Bree was uh, talking just recently, I present here myself in front of you from the socialist current of thought. And uh, I have, I, 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 I want to say it to you because I want to um, also uh, tell, um, tell you what was one of the moments I felt more represented politically in this house, which is the European Parliament. And I have no doubt and uh, no shame in saying that one of these moments where I felt more um, represented, uh, politically speaking, was when Pope Francis came to uh, the Parliament in 2014 and uh, gave his speech as head of state. You know that we, as members of the Parliament, uh, have a lot of speeches from heads of states. And you can imagine that uh, me, as being a member of the left group, the smallest group in the Parliament, I'm not quite enthusiastic <laughs> uh, in the great majority of these uh, addresses that we have in the parliament. And it this was a very, very important uh, moment for us. Important for several reasons. And politically speaking, it was not, um, I would say, um, it was exactly in the moment that we were in need to, to listen to those words. Pope Francis came and uh, the first, uh, if I remember well, the first demand uh, he, he made was to ask the members of the parliament to proper work in order to protect democracy. Uh, it's not enough to say that perhaps one of the major tasks we have ahead uh, in, in these days. He also spoke a lot about employment and workers' rights, the lack of workers' rights, the lack of employment. He spoke about uh, education. He spoke about migration in a moment that the European Union was ignoring so many people trying to arrive to the European Union and ignoring massive movements of refugees from Syria. And, uh, it was very, very important, and I have to say not that much applauded, to be honest, but it was very important that he brought these words in this moment. And he also speak, of course, about human rights and dignity. And as it was said before, and I'm not going to repeat, I think we have a lot of things in common that we need to work and that we need to work together. Um, we uh, live very difficult moments after economic and financial crisis. We are still living and fighting a climate crisis, which seems not to have an end. And of course, we have now the imperialist invasion of Ukraine uh, by Russia. And these moments are uh, really difficult for everyone. And also for us who are trying to work for a world which is more equal and uh, that uh, promotes justice and equality amongst people. And uh, we have to meet <laughs> in these our common objects and try to find uh, proper uh, actions. Because what is at stake is in fact the defense of the very own human ecology, which is at stake in this moment. And I think that uh, forces us to find the broadest alliances possible in order to, to find uh, proper ways to fight the armament, the, the destruction of the planet and of our basis of life, uh, generally speaking. And uh, these alliances have to be, of course, of different natures. Uh, it have to be national, both national, international, and local, but they have also to engage secular sectors of society together with religious sectors 
I don't see a different approach. Very recently, we had the, the opportunity to listen to Luciana Castellina here in the parliament as well, and she did just an amazing, amazing statement about the need of secular and religious sectors to be united in the common agenda that we have. Uh, and we we need to do that, uh, of course, in the name of a common uh, program for peace uh, and engaging all, all the political forces who can be gathered in these same uh, tasks uh, and uh, all sectors, as I said, uh, not only in politics, but also social movements, uh, popular movements, artists, academics, professionals from the different areas, this is for sure one of the main tasks we have ahead. But we also, I think, need to learn from each other how to dialogue. Uh, because sometimes we lose it. <laughs> and uh, when I say how to dialogue is because I think that we all agree that uh, we had some victories <laughs> in the recent years. Uh, in terms of recognition of rights were not even there, in terms of uh, uh, the identification of, for instance, what was our colonial past and, and things were, which were never told. And we had, I'm, I mean, as left, uh, now I'm speaking as left, uh, some uh, uh, successes, but we have, we, and we struggle to, to consolidate these successes and to, to grow the, the action of our intervention and uh, and to stabilize this and 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 uh, as we gather uh, and as we conquer uh, between commas of course more space to more people different people different cultures different different sexual orientations different races at the same time we do this and we gain those spaces we also see the growth of the far right of the racism of the extremism of of the, the antagonist forces I'm into this progressive uh, project. So sometimes we don't know how to dialogue as well. I mean, we also have ghosts. And um, I think that, of course, the way we have to cope with this have to do with our capacity to gather all the sectors that I've said and all the possible people, those who are engaged for the same agenda, but also to discuss and dialogue, uh, dialogue amongst ourselves how to do it. Uh, I think that sometimes the left suffer from some problems in terms of dialogue. I mean, uh, sometimes there is an approach which is more or less characterized by a moral superiority. Sometimes there's an approach um, which does not provide full and proper dignity to those we are dealing with and tends to be a little bit on the line of victimization, for instance. Sometimes we promote more division than unity. Sometimes we have a very sad, desperate message with no hope. And, and, and sometimes we cannot avoid some paternalism towards the most vulnerable groups. Um, and we also know, all of us, I think that pity is very different from empathy. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I do think that, uh, and I always believe that in that as a politician, <laughs> I don't know how to qualify myself, that we did need to promote levels of dialogue, dialogue and recognition and dignity of the others completely outside these agendas of paternalism and division and moral superiority and pity. And sometimes we have difficulties in doing that. But saying this, I think that this is one of the areas where we can work properly together and reinforce our, our agendas and our capacity. We, in the middle of all this crisis and also with the difficulties that left is uh, facing, we should never forget, and as a socialist, I don't forget that it's not only the left which is in crisis, it's mainly the capitalist system which is in crisis, and we have not been capable of dealing with it properly. So uh, we are not uh, in a moment 
And when I say that we need to have all this dialogue and openness and capacity to interact, uh, I also want to say that we are not in a moment of fake consensus. Uh, so saying this means also being brave enough to have proper and strong messages and political programs, to be capable to say to the people that we don't need no more small changes. We really need to, to try to work towards um, measures that change the system, in fact structurally uh, change the system. And we cannot do that alone. So thank you so much for being here. I, I really appreciate. I think, as I said, this is, uh, these are moments that we cannot waste. And we need to do this way together. And especially because I also believe, and with that I finish, I already talked too much, I'm sorry because I, I truly believe that we are also in moments because of uh, the crisis of democracy and the, everything we need to, to, to do and to, to make possible to defend democracy, that uh, the delegated model of democracy doesn't work anymore without the support of society. So for that, uh, we need to be much more and much more open to all those who are interested in joining us in these ways. Thank you so much.